Say what? It's my life. It's my life. feel like whispering, although I really shouldn't, to be quite honest, but uh, good morning, first of all, and uh, this is one of those videos that I actually, <laughs> I think every van lifer has one of those videos where they go stealth camping on a, on a site that they're not allowed to. So today is that day. I am standing somewhere quite an historical place, really, uh, that I think I shouldn't really be sleeping at, but I did. So there you go. Let me make my coffee, get dressed, and then I'll show you where I am, why I'm here, and uh, what significance. It even has a historical significance. You know, we can relate to nowadays. I think I'm not awake yet, so I um, don't make much sense yet. So um, let me make my coffee, get my breakfast, and then we'll get going. <sighs> To be quite honest, I think I'm making a video that every van lifer on YouTube has made before. And that's one of those, shh, I'm not supposed to park here, or shh, I'm not supposed to sleep at this location. And usually, I have to admit, I don't like those kind of videos because I'm thinking like, if you're not supposed to do it, so why are you doing it? And uh, why are you filming it and running around with your camera, which is very, very conspicuous. So um, it's not very stealthy if you do it. But there you go. I am a stealth van camper. As you know, uh, I have this for transit, which is just a plain white van and uh, looks like a builder's van from the outside. Even got the uh, orange um, hard hat at the front of the van, just to make it very convincing. So I do a lot of stealth camping, but camping at places where you can just park and, and, and uh, stay the, uh, the night, the occasional night, or even two or three nights. So I'm uh, 
in that way I am a stealth camper anyway. Now today, this morning, I'm waking up at a historical location and maybe I'm not allowed to sleep here. I didn't see any signs that it's not allowed. So, you know, maybe, maybe it is allowed after all. Um, but um, it's an historical location. I just bought breakfast and bizarrely enough, the breakfast should give you a tip of where I am. So, um, well, I thought that made sense in my brain. So let me explain. I bought um, a nice plate of these three things. I hope they're um, on camera. <laughs> they're very sticky. They're very, I mean, this is like sugar overload. But anyway, if you're clever, no, no, no I'm not saying that if you're clever. But if you know your patisserie, I'm just going to put it like that. If you know your patisserie, then you know where I am at the moment. So that's it. And otherwise I'll explain. So basically in the whole of the world, these things are called Berliners. And uh, in France, they're Boule de Berlin. In, you know, in the Dutch speaking countries, they're uh, Berlin a Bull. Uh, like I said, so they're Berliners everywhere, apart from the place I'm at which I'm guessing that you've guessed by now, it's Berlin. Uh, it's not called Berliners in Berlin. They're called Pfannkuchen, which literally means pancakes, which in the whole of the world is not that. But anyway, I thought I'd buy myself or treat myself to some, uh, some breakfast, uh, this uh, carp overload, uh, but also as a visual aid of where I am waking up this morning. There you go. I'm in Berlin. And not only am I in Berlin, I love Berlin. I've been here before. I've lived here before. Um, I'm also at a historical location. Yesterday I drove in late. So uh, the only thing I did is I parked up, I slept and that was it. This morning I'm going to show you where I'm at and uh, why I chose this location. <laughs> Nearly to the day today, on the 26th of June in uh, 1963, J.F. Kennedy came to Berlin. Now, as you all know, and I'm not going to bore you with the whole Berlin Second World War, the Berlin Wall, I think we all know that story. Um, you just have to think that there was basically a wall dividing Berlin into two pieces, the west and the east side of Berlin. East Berlin being the site of the communists, which the Russians gained after the World War, and then West Berlin, which uh, the Allied forces gained after the World War. 
West was very liberated, East was communist. Um, and there was this war, Cold War basically going on in, uh, until, <laughs> until, well, until recently, basically. Has it ever stopped, I wonder? But at that moment in time, in the 60s, there was a Cold War. And, and West Berlin was really cut off of the world. And President Kennedy from America came to Berlin to really um, talk about democracy, about freedom of people, freedom of choice. And he made this famous Ich bin ein Berliner speech. He actually said two sentences in German. Um, the weird thing is they only pick up on the Ich bin Berliner, but he also said, Lass sie nach um, Berlin kommen. I'll play a little clip here so that you can actually see the historical value of, uh, of this place. And there are even a few who say that it's true that communism is an evil system, but it permits us to make economic progress. Lass sie nach Berlin in common. Let them come to Berlin. All, all free men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin. And therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. Berlin applauded the president for the last time, for within a few months, the square would be still and silent and would be renamed in his memory. Now, in those days, uh, we didn't have uh, Twitter, X or social media, but when he said, Ich bin ein Berliner, nobody in Germany thought anything ill of it. It's only after just one journalist, apparently, in the New York Times mentioned that uh, he had said, ich, uh, I am a donut, that that w rumor, basically, that misconception, um, that uh, fake news, as we would call it nowadays, spread around the world because, of course, one journalist mentioned it and then another journalist from the Washington Post or whatever uh, copied it. And uh, to be quite honest, German people or Berliners, as, as we call them, they never thought anything of it, really. He just says, I'm a Berliner, uh, you know, I'm, I'm from Berlin. I am one of you guys. There might have been, a, you know, if we're going in, down the linguistic route, there might be an explanation between Ich bin ein Berliner und Ich bin Berliner, you know, um, like I am American, I am an American. There, there is a slight difference in meaning. And I think there are people who actually really just uh, wrote papers on it. But at that time, or that moment in time, nobody was thinking of donuts. People were just thinking about their freedom and ab about democracy. And that's kind of the reason I'm here now, really. Be now, if you follow my channel, you know that the last two months I haven't been doing van life and I was just stuck at home, you know, doing a job, getting some money, working. And then in the evening at home, you watch TV, you watch the news, there's elections going on in Europe in the UK, in America, November, and it's all very, very depressing. There's wars going on, Russia is involved again, China might be involved. It's all leading me back to this, like, are we having a Cold War? And is there hope? I don't want to get too heavy now, but that was what basically Kennedy was trying to convey, is there, there is always hope and we have to fight for the freedom of choice by the people. And um, yeah, I think that's where we are in this stage in the world now, isn't it? People want something and governments and politicians aren't giving it. <sighs> it's all very, very depressing. But this is a very historic place and that's why I thought I, I'd come here and, you know, have my little stealth night and I will go and visit uh, the rest of Berlin uh, later on today, but yeah, this is uh, this is uh, the Rathaus Schöneberg. This is the actual 
town hall of Schöneberg where the speech was given. Now I'm trying, I don't think I really succeeded, but I've tried anyway to film the buildings uh, that are still basically, uh, even 60 years later, that are still there. The As a free man, I take pride in the word, Ich bin ein Violiner. You know, from a viewpoint of the president, you can actually still see these buildings. Um, I try to film them that way. But as you can see, I parked just in front of it. No hassle, no problem. And uh, I really enjoyed it. But mostly enough, I enjoyed it because of the value, the historical value that this place has. It's now called JFK Platz, you know, the square of JFK. But of course, before the 60s, it was it had a different name, uh, but because of his... Uh, momentous monumentous well well be because of his visit they changed the name into jfk platz so if you come to berlin it's usually not on the main route of uh, touristy places to go and see i understand that but if you're ever in berlin i think you should come and have a look here on saturdays and sundays there's a flea market as well which is kind of fun to do but uh, yeah go and check it out it might not be in every uh tourist guide or whatever, but it's certainly worth a visit for the sheer historical value of this place. So, I didn't know, but apparently you can walk into this uh, town hall in Schöneberg and uh, they've got some, some nice, well more than nice basically, they've got some interesting uh, exhibitions going. And as you can tell, I am completely on my own, which I think is a bit bizarre, for a town hall. And I'm roaming around, nobody's checking on me. A bit weird. And then all these doors open automatically, which is scares the shit out of me, but hey, I'll investigate some more and see where we end up. No idea, this is all a bit spooky. There you go. There you go. I think I'm lost. As you can see, um, this is really bizarre, but okay, there is this, um, there is this exhibition and it, it is very daunting, really. There's nobody there. It explains uh, the deportation of Jews during the World War and, um, you know, those index cards that you see on every index card, there's a person, there's a Jew on it that um, was deported, so more than 5,000 of them. Um, it's all a bit bizarre here. It, it just feels so empty, so deserted. And yet it's here, I can freely walk in. It's, um, it's quite an experience, really. It actually it kind of, the weirdness of it all, the depressing, topic really got to me hmm
Well, I hope today wasn't too much of a history lesson and a bit too boring with all that Kennedy stuff, but um, like I said, um, it's quite poignant for the times we are living in at the moment, I think. So, um, yeah, I promise to be a bit more lighthearted next week because I'm staying in Berlin. Um, not staying here, of course, because I don't think it's allowed, but uh, it was fun trying it for like one night and one day. Um, a friend of mine who also lives in Schöneberg um, has offered me his um, parking spot on his building's parking lot, so um, I can spend a couple of days there and then I can start visiting some friends, seeing um, some old acquaintances, as they call them, or as I call them, and visit some old haunts. That's it for me for this week. I hope you had some enjoyment out of it. Um, yeah. It's, uh, what's, how does the saying go? You can take the teacher out of the classroom, but you can never take the classroom out of the teacher. No, that's not right. Uh, what's, what's the saying? You can take the teacher out of, oh, I don't know. But, you know, I'm a teacher at heart and I'd like to educate. I hope you learned something. And if you didn't, I hope you had some joy out of it, at least. See you next week. Same place, Berlin. Um, there's some thunderstorms coming, so maybe I'll capture those. Speak to you later. See you soon. See you next week.